Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is a sort of belated monthly wrap-up for March of 2023. So we're almost, we're pretty much in the middle of April. Um, I've had a very busy couple of weeks, haven't had much time to actually record. I'm trying to take advantage of the nice weather right now to record outside on my my back screened in porch. Um, it has been very quiet around here uh, up until <laughs> very recently. I know that when I sit down to record something that all of a sudden there's gonna be all these noises that weren't around before. So we'll see. Like there's one thing, I think somebody's drilling and it almost sounds like a high pitched screaming, but I think somebody's like drilling something. I'm not sure exactly. You might be able to pick up on it. Um, but otherwise I actually live in a pretty quiet area most of the time. Um, I'm gonna be going through the books that I finished reading in March of 2023. Uh, pretty much all these books, with one exception of a, a box set, I've spoken of more in depth in individual videos, mostly my Fresh Red Kills videos, where I talk about the books that I had recently finished reading in more depth, um, and sometimes I have videos that are dedicated to just one book. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on all of these, this is more of just a general summary of what I read during that month. So the first thing that I finished uh, was Xenophon's uh, Hellenica. The landmark edition. Um, so I, uh, this year, 2023, I began Historathon 2023, which is a year-long celebration of reading nonfiction history, and we split the year up into four quarters, and each quarter covers a certain time period. The first quarter of the year, which ended in March, uh, was prehistory up to 500 CE. So this fell in with that, and I read this as a buddy read with um, Mark over at Book Time with Elvis, uh, one of my co-hosts for Historathon, and also a subscriber, um, Stephanie, uh, who's great to buddy read with. And we had read, um, previously, uh, the, the month before, we had read Xenophon's Anabasis, and we really liked that. And this one, it is, it is a much more, it is a much different read. Um, so... This is more Xenophon covering the history of his time period, uh, from the years 411 to 362 BCE. And it kind of takes us to the end of the Peloponnesian War, which a history was begun by Thucydides, but he died before he could finish it. So he finishes that, then he looks at the uh, reign of the tyrants in Athens, then he kind of jumps around the Aegean. Um, sometimes we're in Persia, sometimes we're in different Greek city-states, and he's basically following wars and conflicts over time. Uh, the very helpful and in-depth um, introduction essay uh, for this does describe it as anecdotal and um, episodic, and I would definitely agree with that. Um, I am really glad that I had the landmark edition to read this with, uh, which comes with all sorts of great marginalia and footnotes, um, as well as images of the places that are being talked about, uh, in addition to plenty of maps, um, which with, you know, it just seems like there's countless Greek city-states to try and keep track of exactly who they are and where they are. I don't think that I would have enjoyed it as much if I read it in a different edition, but because I read it in the landmark edition, I did end up enjoying this, and glad I read it. And next year for Historathon, we are going to move on to some other ancient historians, but I'm glad we got through uh, Xenophon, both of his major works that are at least available in Landmark. Um, I also read a few other things, so also as part of a group um, read, uh, not everybody finished it, <laughs> but some people did. Uh, I have been going through um, gothic works, gothic literature. I am a horror fan, but I also really like to know the roots of horror. And I've been looking at Gothic literature really from the mid-18th century with the Castle of Otranto all the way up through, at this point, we're in the 1820s, uh, looking at some of the more influential works. And some of them have been really good, some of them have been eh, mediocre. I really ended up liking this one. This is James Hogg, The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner, uh, a Scottish work published in 1824, I believe. Um, and it's a really, really fascinating text for me. Uh, we have a very unique sort of storytelling structure. It begins with an editor's, uh, an editor's account, I guess you could say, um, a fictional editor. Uh, but basically, it's supposed to be the editor collecting all these various tidbits of evidence and folklore from the past hundred years um, about what happened between two brothers uh, in what would have been the early 1700s. 
And then we end up having an account of one of those brothers, the titular justified sinner, somebody who believes that through his kind of Calvinist philosophy, that he is one of the elect, uh, that he has already been predestined for heaven by God. So therefore, he cannot sin really at all. Uh, no sin can he commit that would keep him out of heaven because he's been predestined for it. And he ends up basically being tempted by a devil figure to kill people in the name of religion. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of a, a commentary on religious fanaticism. And then we return back to the editor, and we have kind of an interesting suicide burial that's been dug up uh, and discussed. So we have a really fascinating structure, uh, some really cool storytelling techniques, a lot of doubling and doppelgangers are throughout this. And again, I've, I've spoken more in depth about this in a, one of my previous videos that you can check out, but I really like this. This is definitely one of the major hits uh, for um, the Gothic reads. And uh, I think the other people who finished it did end up liking this. Um, I know that, uh, uh, sorry, Greg from Another Bibliophile Reads read this, um, Shelly Swearingen, um, she also participated in the read-along, I think she ended up really liking it as well, and she had some really great thoughts, and I believe Mark from Booktime with Elvis, I think that he might have finished it as well, but, um, I don't think, that's right, Greg from Another Bibliophile Reads, he didn't, he didn't actually end up finishing it, but I think Sean, Sean D. Standfast definitely did, um, so if I'm remembering correctly, uh, so, um, I'll leave links for their channels down below. But, um, yeah, I think everybody who finished it did end up liking this one quite a bit. I also read at the end of the month uh, this short work, John Hersey's Hiroshima, or Hiroshima. I'm never, I think I'm in the habit of saying Hiroshima, but I think it's maybe actually Hiroshima. Uh, I'm still, think, saying it wrong, but uh, I'm going to switch back and forth probably as I discuss um, those two pronunciations. But essentially, after the bombing in 1945, a year after, uh, John Hersey, a journalist, went over to Japan and spoke to survivors. And at first, he gives their eyewitness survivor accounts. That's what that kind of the first half of the book is. And it's harrowing stuff, as you can imagine. It's the, the terrible things that people went through um, and what they saw, what they experienced, what they saw others go through. Uh, so it's, it's harrowing stuff. And then this edition has, like, 40 years later, in the 80s, he went back to um, Japan to kind of catch us up on the people who he had spoken to in 1946 and where they ended up, uh, which ones are alive. Um, and that stuff is also, it, it's also quite interesting. But I think the first half of the book is really uh, why you go and read it. And, uh, yeah, I, we all know this is a, <laughs> a terrible incident. Um, but I found it very, very valuable. Um, and a very, very good read. Once again, I've spoken about this in another video more in depth. The other things that I was reading in the month, uh, because it was Middle Grade March, that's one reason I was reading it. Middle Grade March is a booktube event where we celebrate basically uh, writing for younger people. Um, but I'm also a middle school social studies teacher. And at my middle school, I have kicked off a history book club, uh, a monthly book club, where we try to kind of learn history through various types of books. Um, it could be nonfiction, it could be historical fiction. For the first month, to kind of get as much interest as possible in the club, we ended up looking at the Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales, uh, which are graphic novels um, written really for really for a middle school audience. And I have to say, I, I wasn't sure what to expect with these. Uh, the librarian at my school, she's going along and helping me out with the book club. She had recommended that we uh, that we start off with this because she knew how many students really, really liked it. Um, she hadn't read them herself at that point, but she knew that there were some kids that just get, get addicted to these things. Um, so I said, yeah, okay, let's give that a try. So I had purchased a box set um, to read them myself. You know, I mean, they can be read very quickly. Um, and I have to say, I was pretty impressed. Uh, the whole premise is essentially that Nathan Hale, who is, I live in Connecticut, he's also the Connecticut, uh, I think, state hero. Um, he was a school teacher who spied for George Washington, but he was caught by the British and hanged. He wasn't very good uh, as a spy, but he had a very famous um, last line, the whole, uh, my only regret is I have but one life to give for my country. So that put him down into history. In this version of things, he's on the gallows, uh, he's ready to be hanged, but then a giant, um, basically history book swallows him and then spits him out, and he now knows all the history, and in each edition now, he is telling historical tales to his executioner, and also to the British officer who is in charge of his execution, and essentially delaying his own execution. Uh, so it's a fun premise, 
and it creates a good opportunity to um, play around with the graphic novel format um, in ways that I think are really work to the strength of this type of medium. Um, I was actually really impressed by a lot of the history that he's able to pack into here. Even in one page, he presents a lot of history. Uh, the kids who read this will learn a tremendous amount, and he's able to also make complicated historical topics simplified, but not overly simplified. I mean, it's it's not it's not dumb. Uh, there is humor. Um, some of the humor is certainly a little bit for a younger audience, but. The first book, One Dead Spy, kind of had the most of it that I've come across. And I've read now two box sets of these, um, and I've enjoyed all of them, but the humor doesn't get out of hand. Uh, and when it's inappropriate, it is not there. Um, so the ones that I read were One Dead Spy, uh, Treaties, Trenches, Mud and Blood, and The Underground Abductor. Uh, this one, Treaties, Trenches, is about World War I. The Underground Abductor was about um, Harriet Tubman. And then you've got uh, Raid of No Return. That's about the Doolittle Raid uh, and also Pearl Harbor, the bombing of Japan. Um, and then we have Major Impossible, who I'm, I don't remember his name, but he was... Uh, this goes back and forth between this guy's time in, uh, in the Union Army in the Civil War and then him going down, uh, I think it was the Colorado River, and basically exploring that and how difficult that was. And then the last one I had read was Lafayette, uh, which really focuses on Lafayette's time in the American Revolution. Doesn't much go beyond that, but uh, all of these were really impressive stuff. So if you've got young readers at home that want to learn history, um, or even if you're an adult and this kind of thing sounds fun, and you want to learn about a topic, uh, you know, just kind of get your, your feet wet and before you go into more, you know, serious history, I think these are actually great options. Um, so I think next year when we do the uh, History Book Club, we'll also choose a month where essentially what we did was all the kids could choose whichever one they wanted to read. Um, and that's one of the reasons I made sure to read at least six of these things so I'd have more, more people to talk to. Uh, <laughs> chances are I would have read at least one of the things that they had read. Um, so that's really about it. That's what I read in March. Um, now, in April, we are in the second quarter of Historathon. I'm diving into uh, to Viking history at this point. Um, the first week of April, I was kind of wrapping up things from the first quarter, and I'll have some videos about that uh, forthcoming pretty soon. Um, but anyhow, this is what I read in March. Let's see if I can make a stack. I'm going to shake the table a little bit as I do this. But... We have got the landmark Xenophon and the Hellenica. All right, we've got various Nathan Hale's hazardous histories. Uh, we've got uh, the Confessions, sorry, the Private Memoirs, Confessions of a Justified Sinner by James Hogg, and we've got John Hersey's Hiroshima or Hiroshima. Uh, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you, Booktube.